Hi friends, welcome back. 2020 is finally coming to an end. I know, it has been a long one. And I know this is the part where people normally talk about their year and they're like, oh, there were so many ups and downs. And we've all experienced this year together and it's been a doozy. Um, and there's nothing more I can contribute to that conversation. So today, instead, I want to talk about the music I've discovered this year and how it has impacted me in a positive way. Full disclosure, this video was inspired by my Spotify hashtag wrapped. I adore seeing my friends and like what they're listening to, what their year looked like. So I thought this would be a fun video, although I don't think any of the stuff I'm going to mention today was on my Spotify, <laughs> but that's okay. Side tangent, I'm actually listening to a podcast right now from the CEO of Spotify and let me tell you, it is so good. Like this man, he's, he's just incredible and it makes me even happier that I use Spotify and not Apple Music. So anyway, what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about my favorite song in the four genres I listen to, my favorite composer I discovered this year, the best musical I discovered this year, and the best performance that I saw this year. That's a lot of stuff, so let's get started. The four genres I listen to the most are classical, pop, Broadway, and I don't listen to a ton of it, but alternative. Um, <laughs> this is me trying to be hip with the times. In the classical category, hands down, my favorite song that I discovered this year is Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto Number no. 1. This piece hit me out of left field, and as soon as I heard it, it my life was changed. It like blows my mind. This piece has existed longer than I have been alive, and I've never heard it. This is actually the song that inspired my um, composer challenge that I did in November. Yeah, that was November. Wow, it feels like forever ago. But yeah, I heard this in mid-October. I was actually editing Halloween recitals at work. A kid was playing an excerpt uh, from the second movement of the piano concerto, but when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is pretty. Let me like look up the real thing. I'm just interested. My life was changed. It was so good. It was so like inspiring and I listened to it on repeat for days. It was the only thing I listened to and I was like before I die I want to either conduct this piece or play it. We all know my piano skills are not the best so let's hope I make it as a conductor one day. This is one that isn't copyrighted so I can actually play it for you. So that's Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto. I encourage you to listen to the whole thing. It's so, I just feel revitalized now. So I hope you enjoy it too. Next up, we have the pop category. I wish I was more versed in the pop culture. I find it interesting. It's good stuff. I just don't listen to a ton of it. So if you have any pop recommendations, please drop them below. But this year, the best one I discovered is Simple and True by Sarah Bareilles. If y'all know me at all, you know I am obsessed with Sarah Bareilles. I actually discovered her first from reading her book. So I highly, 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 highly recommend that. It was the best book I've ever read. Anyway, Simple and True is a simple song. It's not complex. I can't like tell you, the, oh, the harmonies are amazing. I mean, they are, but like you listen to it and it's like nothing to write home about. What I love about it is her connection to what she is singing. And this was written, I believe, for her TV show. But when she sings it on her album, More Love, I think that's what it's called. Is it More Love? I hope it's More Love. Um, She's just so genuine and so connected. And of course she uses vocal techniques. I'm like, ooh, I wanna do that. So yeah, Simple and True by Sarah Bareilles. Next up we have the Broadway category, which is by far the hardest for me to choose just one song because it's what I listen to the most. And I've discovered a lot of really good songs this year. But if I had to choose just one, it would have to be With Him by Joey Contreras. I discovered this in January or February of this year. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, this is going on my senior recital. It's so good. It's so, it's so much fun to think about getting into this character. And the last song I discovered this year is in the alternative category. Look at me being all edgy. Um, I didn't, 
I didn't go seeking this out, but a YouTuber I follow actually put this out in the world. And I listened to it and I was like, I could get down to this. Like, it's pretty cool. So it is Dandelion by Gabby Hanna. And I love, so the line in it, so I took a breath and made a wish and blew them all away. It just hits me and it's deep and I love it. I love it. Next up, we have the top composer I discovered this year, which hands down has to be Carlos Lalonde. He actually has a YouTube channel here. I'll link it below. Y'all need to check it out. He is so amazing. His niche is giving productivity tips for composers and musicians of all kinds. He brings it all under one roof and he does it so well. But on top of that, talking about his compositions, they are so inspired and every time I hear them they make me want to like do something it brings out emotion in me I don't have to try and that's exactly what you want out of good music is something that meets you where you are to make you feel something instead of you like trying to reach it out of the piece if I had to recommend one piece, it would have to be Summer's Farewell, which I think he wrote this year too. So I'll have it linked below. Please check it out. He deserves the world. Next up, we have my favorite musical I've discovered this year. And again, this is very difficult because I love so many musicals, but if I had to choose one, it would have to be Ordinary Days. This musical wasn't written this year, but I didn't hear it in its entirety for the first time until this year. Its music is how would you describe it? It's not like freely like, oh, this sounds pretty. The composer does well what I do terribly. Um, there's a lot of piano like staccato stuff. It's so fresh. It's not you, your typical humdrum musical. And it's also not Hamilton. <laughs> from like a music theory standpoint, I've learned a lot from listening to it. And I bought the score um, a couple months ago and just analyzing it has been very fulfilling for me. So that's my favorite musical. Last but not least, we have the best performance of the year, which was very difficult to choose, as you can imagine, because there weren't very many performances. The ones that were virtual, oh, I don't know, I'm sorry. You just, you can't get the same effect from a virtual performance as a live one. Um, with that being said, I had to look through my performance list, which I track in Notion, to uh, remember all the performances I've seen and had this year. But if you're curious about seeing this a little bit more in depth, I'm gonna have a video coming out pretty soon, I think within the next week or so, um, where I just go through this whole list. So stay tuned for that. But for my favorite performance, I'd have to say it was Waitress the Musical, which I got to see on January 16th. I had been obsessed with the music for years and I was so lucky that a professional traveling theater company it was coming right to my backyard basically and I got to see it with my two best friends in the whole world. Even though I was obsessed with the music and I listened to it all the time, it hit different in the context of the show. Seeing it live was just a different experience. I laughed, I cried, I was shocked. I still got goosebumps. I miss having that feeling, that inspiration of, of watching a performance live. Hopefully we'll be able to do it soon, but who really knows? So there you have it. These were my top music discoveries of 2020. I would love to know what your top music choices of the year were, especially like if you have, I really wanted to include a band in this, but I don't listen to bands. So drop a band or two below. Also your favorite artists and composers. I would love to hear them. And yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.